Um, so Adrian Sudhalter, our next um, speaker, is a New York-based art historian with a focus on Dada and the early 20th century European avant-garde. She holds a PhD from the Institute of Fine Arts, New York University, and has held curatorial positions at the Bush Reisinger Museum, Harvard, and at the Museum of Modern Art, New York. She is co-editor of the scholar scholarly collection catalog, Dada in the Collection of, Mod of the Museum of Modern Art, and has published on topics, topics including Marcel Duchamp, Max Ernst, Photomontage, and the Bauhaus. She has taught at the Institute of Fine Arts and is currently directing a major research project, the reconstruction of Tristan Tsara's unrealized magnum opus, Dada Globe. She will present the exhibition, Dada Globe, reconstructed at the Kunst, Kunsthaus, Kunsthaus Zurich and at the Museum of Modern Art New York this year, accompani accompanied by a major scholarly volume. Adrian? Hello. Um, thank you so much, Adina and Netta, for the um, invitation to be here. It's my first time in Israel, and it's really um, quite a thing to be here. Um, it's it's a, an honor. Um, I have to apologize. I'm not speaking about Man Ray, but I, I think um, this talk or this project maybe expands the topic a little bit to um, you know the centennial of Dada, which is this year, 2016, and Man Ray does play a part um, in this project. So, um, the subject of my talk is Dada Globe, um, a major anthology of the Dada movement. And do you hear me? Okay, is it? Yeah. Okay, of the Dada movement, planned and edited um, by. Oops. Planned and edited by Dada co-founder Tristan Zara in uh, late 1920, early 1921, a book which was taken um, to an advanced stage of planning before it derailed uh, due to various factors, money being primary, in April or May of 1921. Had it appeared as planned in Paris in 1921, Dada Globe would have been the movement's most ambitious publication Oops, too close? Not close enough? Okay. <laughs> um, Dada Globe would have been the, the movement's most ambitious publication, its magnum opus. It was to have been 160 to 200 pages, um, as you can see in these specifications by Tristan Zara, um, and would have included over 100 texts and 100 images by about 50 contributors artists and writers from across Europe and beyond. Initiated four years after the founding of the Dada movement, Dada Globe came late in Dada's history, and the demise of the project was closely tied to the demise of the movement itself. What remains significant about this failed project, this absent, unrealized magnum opus, are the traces it left in its wake. Dada Globe was among the Dada movement's most generative projects. Zara's call, ooh, uh -oh, sorry. Uh, Zara's call for contributions to the book prompted the creation of literary and visual works in unprecedented numbers. What I will focus on here today is a small selection of the visual works that were created for the pages of Dada Globe. Some of these, such as Max Ernst's The Chinese Nightingale, seen on the screen, are today considered iconic works, not only of Dada, but of, of the 20th century avant-garde more broadly. Um, but their origin in Dada Globe, Dada Globe has largely been forgotten. To place these works back in their original context does a number of things. It historicizes them within the particular post-World War one moment, so in other words, not during the war, but after the war, which is significant. It also recasts them as having been created in dialogue um, with Zara, uh, with the International Collective, which was this book, um, and in, with Dada in general, rather than in isolation. And a work like Max uh, Ernst's 
Chinese Nightingale is so often considered just within Ernst's own oeuvre because it had such ramifications for his later works, but it's interesting to put it back in this context. Um, and it resituates them in their original material context um, as maquettes for reproduction rather than as unique original artworks to be experienced in person on the walls of a museum or gallery. Um, that is, their final state as intended was um, for reproduction on the printed page. So during the week of November 8th, 1920, Zara, together with his uh, closest Parisian ally, the painter and writer Francis Picabia, and two of their associates, Georges Ribemont Design and Walter Zerner, sent some 50 solicitation letters to writers and artists for contributions to Dada Globe. Recipients were not necessarily established Dadaists, but were figures that may, that may have contributed to Zara's or Picabia's uh, magazines. 391 is Picabia's and Dada was Zara's magazine in the past, or who were simply avant-garde artists devoted to the principle of free international exchange. The letter seen on the screen, um, and just uh, uh, French-speaking contributors were sent handwritten letters um, personalized letters, but German contributors were sent this form letter, which is an incredibly sort of detailed, um, almost bureaucratic um, letter, which is so uh, unexpected for Dada in the sense that, um, well, it, it has these very clear instructions and a deadline, and it's very surprising for a lot of people. Um, but to, to begin quoting from it, so the letter began. This coming March, a Dada book is to be published by the important Parisian publisher, La Sirene. It is to be 300 pages long, format 25 by 32 centimeters, um, selling price 20 francs, edition 10,000. And that's a huge edition. That's a very large, for then and even for now, it's a very large, it's like a bestseller kind of edition size. The letter went on to request four types of visual submissions. Photographs of artworks, black and white drawings, designs for book pages, and a quote, photo of your head, not body, which you can alter freely, although it should retain clarity. Letters to literary contributors were amended to request, quote, something else verbal or other inventions. Throughout November and December, letters streamed into the mailbox of Germaine Everling, Picabia's companion at the time at 14 Rue Emile Augier in Paris' 16th arrondissement. Um, her apartment is seen be behind uh, Zara and Picabia in the car, yeah, and it on that side and on this side in a contemporary view. Apparently, so much international mail arrived in Everling's mailbox that the police were summoned and conducted an investigation. This is uh, what she says in her, in her memoir. Among the most stimulating requests of the Dada Globe solicitation letter was one for, a photograph for photographic portraits, which could be altered but should retain clarity. Some artists, like Jean Arp, seen on the screen, presented informal, unmanipulated photographic portraits. While other artists, ooh, like Max Ernst, opted to stage their portraits before a studio photographer and to manipulate them. In this well-known self-portrait, Ernst presents himself under the name Dada Max, which is scrawled across his left cheek. He is accompanied by a superimposed collaged figure named Caesar Buonaretti, a personification of the towering figures of the history of art against whom Dada Max, ironically, is measured and remarkably prevails. You see this measure of 5,000 um, unspecified uh, points or measures, and he's so sort of huge against the history of art. At the precise moment, that the call for Dada Globe submissions was sent, the League of Nations convened in Paris for a provisional committee on communication and transit, which among other things, established recommendations for the standardization of international portraits. 
They recommended that each country's passport include a photograph of the passport holder, his or her signature, details regarding nationality, gender, address, marital status, and so on. Against the backdrop of these official efforts to fix individual identity, the Dadaists insisted on the right to construct and destabilize it. Alfred Grunewald became Johannes Bargeld, and with the help of the Venus de Milo, confounded expectations of stable gen gender identity. Theo van Doesburg became I.K. Bonsit, and similarly refused fixed identity by simply denying access to his fe uh, facial features. Johannes Bader became the Oberdada by carefully excising his own image from a photograph and substituting that of a hapless dummy in a military uniform. The Oberdada functioning as a parody of Germany's militar militarism and me uh, megalomaniacal ambitions um, at the end of at the end of World War I, as perceived from abroad. In his portrait, Francis Picabia, Zara, Zara's closest collaborator on Dada Globe, similarly trafficked in stereotypes, identifying himself as a gigolo, and I, I, I can't pronounce this French word, but um, where he, he writes Rasta Dada, it's for Rasta Query, um, which is the word in French for gigolo a phony, le lustique, and a, fail a failure, le raté. As a kind of sec second Dada Globe portrait, or perhaps a completion of the first, Picabia also submitted his now famous signed signature seen on the right. If, for the League of Nations, the photographic portrait and the signature served as reliable indices of fixed identity, for the Dadaists, they invited the opposite. For Sophie Teuber, um, concealed behind her Dada head and wearing a lace veil and felt hat to imitate its abstracted forms, the photographic portrait provided a means to conceal conceal and generalize individual identity in favor of shared group identity. Just as the category of manipulated portraits prompted artists to subverse, subvert the category of portraiture, the re request for photographs of artworks similarly pro prompted artists to subvert the category of photography of, of, of photographs of artworks. In this now famous pair of images, L'homme and la femme, Man Ray assembled, and here we have Man Ray, proudly, Man Ray. Um, Man Ray assembled found materials in egg beater, light reflectors, clothespins, and so on, for the purpose of photographing them, and discarded the assemblages thereafter. Man Ray did away with the original artwork. The sculpture is gone. The artwork is known only through its photographic trace. These are not then photographs of artworks, but rather um, artworks made for photography, artworks that exist only in reproduction. Max Ernst submitted his photo montage of a bomb with a human eye and appendages in this category photographs of artworks, together with a deceptive caption that identifies it as a sculpture, three, um, three meters 10 by two meters 25. That would be a huge sculpture. Um, the photo montage itself is, is like 12 by nine centimeters. Um, in such works, the artwork in reproduction becomes a new category for artistic production unto itself. The category of designs for book pages placed photomechanical reproduction at center stage. Together, Max Ernst and Jean Arp created the first of their collaborative so-called Fatagaga collages for Dada Globe in this category, to which Arp, Ernst contributed the image on the left and Arp the text on the right. In his letter to Zara accompanying these works, Ernst wrote, quote, please tell the engraver to hide the seams of the pasted pictures. 
these hybrid visual verbal works were conceived to be experienced as free-floating imagery on the printed book page, detached from the materiality of the original collage, the paper fragments, the glue, the underlying support. The imagery on the printed page was to float like the printed text. And here I show you uh, the work as reproduced in our 2016 reconstruction of Dada Globe based on Zara's indications. Zara's own co contributions to Dada Globe um, were minimal. He contributed a few texts and a few artworks, such as these seen on the screen, in which he sought to imitate the style of another artist, namely uh, Picabia, with the aim of negating the highly prized idea of personal signature style. When he made artworks like this, he did so under um, the not so subtle pseudonym Mac Robber. Um, for Zara's, but Zara's main role was that of editor. Here, seen in what was most likely his Dada Globe portrait, Zara is represented not as a writer or as an artist, but in his role as editor, poised between a, uh, beside a precarious stack of papers, including two issues of his journal, Dada, which threatened to cascade down upon him. Zara's face appears not once, but three times in this image, posed for the photograph on the right, again in a formal photographic portrait in the pile at center, and a third time in his mirrored reflection at left. Zara's replicating image alludes to the most effective means at his disposal, the infinite reproducibility of modern print media. With all the contributions in hand, Zara compiled a reprodu reproduction list of the visual works keyed to, to page numbers in the planned volume. He marked each work on its verso with, with the numbers established on the reproduction list. Um, but for reasons um, that have to do with Dada's infighting and, and perhaps actually the international ambitions of the volume itself, um, Picabia, who was to fund the volume, and it would have been an expensive volume at such a, you know, so many pages, withdrew his support of it, separated himself from Dada, and the volume was canceled shortly thereafter. So most of the works remained in Zara's collection until his death in 1963, and many were disbanded at the auction of his collection at Kornfeld and Klipstein in 1968. Um, some of the pages of that auction catalog you see on the screen. And, um, oh, I don't include, here, this is the auction of Zara's collection. There are actually images that show Arturo Schwartz because he acquired many of the works there, but I don't have one of him here. Um, with the dispersal of these works, not only was the record of Dada Globe disbanded, but the objects were transformed. They took their place in the world of commodities as unique um, material objects slated for presentation on the exhibition wall, whose life and reproduction on the book page um, took second place to their in-person presence circulating uh, within, no longer beyond, um, the economy of the art world and presented for exhibition on the wall. So it's um, our task a century later in reconstructing Dada Globe uh, to return these objects to their rightful revolutionary place beyond um, the economy of the art world in free circulation on the printed page. Thank you very much.